。您好，同志们，我的名字是何伟立。现在我给你中国人民共和国，也是中国军队历史队很有意思的事情。如果你有一个问题，你可以问我。你没有喜欢我的回答，谢人听懂吗 ？Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to give you a briefing on the development of Chinese military bio weapons.、Uh, as I mentioned in my opening soliloquy, this will be a reflection of the Chinese Communist Party as well as the Chinese military. Jun Dui. If you have any questions, please ask those. You may not like the answer, but I'll give it to you anyway. Well, this is being recorded and presented under traffic light protocol red, and of course Chatham House rules. If you have any concerns or questions about this, please stop watching. If you're unfamiliar with Chatham House rules, please Google that before you continue. So today we're going to talk about China, specifically the military use, consideration, planning, and development of bio weapons as a prescription for. Enduring conflict capacity and defeating adversaries on the battlefield. Now, as we go to China, you'll note that the middle of this map represents their view of the outside world. Everyone is subversive, dominant, and less than equal to the Chinese people. This is just culturally the way it is. If you're offended by that, you know, too bad. But the Chinese are calling themselves Zhongguo, which means literally middle kingdom. Zhong is middle. Guo means the king or queen's riches surrounded by the four borders of their kingdom. Remember, the Chinese dream and the manifestation of their culture is one of dominating others. And unfortunately, you are. If you're not watching this in our Chinese, you're already perhaps curious about where this is going. If you're a foreigner like me, you are subservient to the Chinese domination, and that's just the way it is. So this is a third part in a series that will talk about how unrestricted weapons. Of war will shape future conflicts, specifically bio weapons as developed by the Chinese military. Now, the abstract, of course, is just to let you know that this is third in a three-part series examining the Chinese military use of biological reagents in a kinetic capacity. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Years one and two presented at the Biohacking Village. I suggest that you go back and look at those on YouTube.、Uh, year one in 2019 essentially predicted what was going to happen with COVID. 19 year two last year essentially demonstrated that indeed the Wuhan virus or a virus called COVID here in the Western world we will not say what、uh, some failed leaders have talked about what the、uh, cultural attribution of this is really in year two I demonstrated that it did in fact come out of Wuhan、I'll、go back and look at that if you'd like but today we're going to talk continue、uh, to discuss the unrestricted warfare strategy that goes back to the er early 1990s. It really defines the military strategy and initiative, including things such as the supply chain, Program 863, and other supporting components that discuss the Chinese military bioweapons strategy. All of those are going to be revealed during this discussion. Remember, this is traffic light protocol red. Here's our agenda. We're going to take a look at three basic elements: everything from no hyperbole bioweapons programs,、uh, the China's Chinese Communist Party or CCP. Science and technology programs, and then an examination of future state and planning using the dime mnemonic,、uh, meaning diplomatic intel, information, and economic,、uh, will be the focus for this. Now, as we go into this, you'll note that the biological weapons will have very much a military flavor. Last year, it was research from a military civilian perspective. Year before that, it was definitely a civilian with a taste or an、uh, hors d'oeuvre of military、uh, response to COVID. Now we're going to, of course, talk about nuclear, biological, and chemical. If you've served in the U.S. military or military of any other country, when you heard the words MBC, you remember your gas chamber training. Many of us remember that with such、uh, rapid abandon, it's like yesterday. Well, we're going to talk about that from a non-kinetic perspective as we progress through this. Now, the old version of China is important to remember that historically they have indeed had foreign troops stationed on their soil. And the response to that occupation in the 1900s impacts not only the information warfare component, which I'm known for primarily, but also in this age the bio weapons capability. Now, and we'll talk about why that's important because the Chinese fear, above all, the fact that a foreign power will occupy them again. And as you know, with some of my previous discussions, the Communist Party, the current regime, 
uh, historically knows that if the population is dissatisfied with the discourse that it is giving from a leadership and political party perspective, they will rise up and essentially be uh, requesting that the CCP step down. The Communist Party will never allow that to happen as long as they're in power. Now, when we talk about China, you think of the dragon, you think of the red dragon, that's my hacker alias. But more importantly, what I would like you to do is know that China is a major superpower. And as such, they believe, of course, that under the Communist Party rule that they will dominate, colonize, and otherwise rule the rest of the world, which is their mandate of heaven, if you know your Chinese history. Now, some of my foreign research, as you know from other presentations that I've given, has been redacted, removed, and cannot no longer be accessed. Uh, in this uh, particular presentation, I have started to make a decision to not include those URLs. If you want those URLs and you're in a position that will help your research, I ask that you reach out to me and I'll be happy to provide them. I know that this presentation will be seen by the Communist Party. It will be seen by my friends at the Chinese military think tank. It is not meant disrespectfully or any sort of um, dishonor towards the culture, history, of China. That is not the point. It is really to educate from a military perspective what is going on in China. Now, that military revolution that you probably heard about, the Re revolution of military affairs coined by Thomas, uh, Mr. Thomas down at Fort Leavenworth, really also speaks to the, some of the breakthroughs of biotechnology and how future war will be able to use this as a combat force multiplier. And it's interesting because in the Chinese military press, they are really researching and trying to understand this, especially in a post-COVID world. And I'll tell you about that in terms of one of the conclusions and why it's important to listen to the end. Now, when it comes to Chinese military history, and certainly the history from a cultural perspective of the way that the Chinese view bioweapons control, it's important to revisit the fact that they are not part of the OPCW in the Hague. Uh, while they adhere to it, they do not belong to it. And the Chinese military, as you can see in this URL, which has been redacted, I believe, uh, firmly believe that while this is necessary for other countries, it does not apply to the Chinese military. And as such, they will prepare vigorously in order to prevent this from happening. Now, why you may say, are they so aggressive? Well, it's important to understand that during World War II, the Chinese were invaded by the Japanese. Here is yet another historical chapter of what the Chinese fear, which is foreign domination and perhaps uh, colonization by a foreign force. Thus, there is no love lost between the Chinese and the Japanese. In fact, if you go to Beijing, as I have done recently, you will note that there is the Japanese War of Aggression Museum outside of Beijing. It's a fantastic historical view of what the Japanese military did to the Chinese civilians and military in the form of biological weapons testing. Some very nasty stuff was essentially leveled against men, women, and children. Uh, the Japanese were very brutal and the Chinese remember this. As a result, they have developed their own weapons grade chemical weapons and toxin agents. And I'll give you this as a, a review in terms of what the Chinese military is doing in the present day in response to what the Japanese did to them historically. Now, you may have seen this during last year, but I want you to remember that weaponization of biological agents really is something that they take very serious. And they look at it from an intelligence uh, perspective. There's no secret here, believe me, they want the US, the main protagonist, to know what they're doing in terms of developing chemical weapons because they want it to be a fair and equal ground when it comes to war. They will basically state from a military perspective, we told you so, you need to be prepared for this. Now, what's interesting is I will reveal here shortly, they do not only always test these on military uh, troops in order to prepare for that next level of warfare or unrestricted warfare using bioweapons, but they test it on civilian populations within the People's Republic of China. You may have heard of rest of Xinjiang province and the Muslim population there. They are not without their uh, mistreatment by the Chinese. Uh, military and government. This is not a political statement, it just is a fact, and, and we need to come to grips with that. Some of those bioweapons bio development terms, as you can see here, include a variety. Now, I put this out there for the scholars that would like to research this. If you're unfamiliar with the terms in Chinese, then certainly this gives you an opportunity to grab a screenshot, again, TLP Red, and research these on your own. Now, from a nuclear, biological, chemical weapon perspective, we go into the military revolution. 
understanding that biotechnology is really the mainstay of a future battlefield if they need to go in the kinetic space. And the way that they are researching this is to integrate not only academic institutions, military, scientific uh, programs within China to develop some military-oriented initiatives or programs, which include active, uh, aggressive collaboration and procurement of dual-purpose commercial civilian technologies that can be applied in a civilian military purpose. And you may say, Bill, yeah, we've all heard about IP theft. What's new? Well, I was on a briefing yesterday with the FBI <laughs> and I asked them about 863 plan and they said they would have to get back to me. They had never heard about it. <laughs> well, let me tell you, with all due respect to the FBI, uh, the Chinese 863 plan should have been top of the list of the, the discussion from that, uh, that agent yesterday. Uh, really, this tells about how that dual use technology goes back to the third month of 1986 in terms of the active cyber espionage targets. And you may be saying to yourself, well, Bill, you've given us the URL. It's all in Chinese. How are we to translate this? Well, I'll tell you, you can easily do a Google translation as long as these uh, URLs are up. But within these active targetings of all of the areas of critical infrastructure, science, technology, and research are indeed biotechnology. And you may have said, well, yeah, this is nothing new. And I would tell you that if you're in a counterintelligence role, in the federal government of any country and you don't know what China's 863 plan is, you should look in the mirror and fire yourself because this is really the roadmap in terms of the companies within China that you should be targeting uh, from an active intelligence and counterintelligence perspective. Part of that, of course, is the Thousand Talents plan and the success. Here's an example of a gentleman who works for an interesting institute of zoology as part of the Chinese Academia, Academic uh, Sciences, CAS. What's interesting is he is really working on developing not only biological weapons, but looking at different <clears throat> types of applications in a military perspective. And one of those is really genetic weapons. And what he talks about is that these new generations can be made by modifying the genetic code of disease-causing microorganisms. Think of COVID, for example. Use gene editing technology to find the level of, oh, offensive capabilities from a military perspective that will affect the enemy at the genetic level on the battlefield, meaning they can essentially defeat any nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons training and preparation, therefore giving the Chinese military that first mover advantage and competitive military success that they so are desiring to enjoy. Now, of course, not to delve back into what happened last year, certainly with COVID, but if you're familiar with a biosafety lab four, that's the highest level. We have them here in the US and certainly the one at the Wuhan Institute of Virology uh, was a BSL-4. And you may ask yourself, well, if that's such a tightly controlled environment for bioweapons development and bio research, how did the uh, COVID-19 escape that? Well, that's another lecture from last year. What I mean to tell you is that they're talking about from these BSL-4, these genetic weapons are going to essentially impact positively the development of future warfare planning capabilities and future acquisition of technology to help the Chinese military be successful on the battlefield, including a development of a biological atomic bomb, achieving military goals, much like in the information warfare or information space where you don't need to have soldier on soldier or Marine on Marine, and that they do believe that from a strategic deterrent role, genetic weapons will serve that purpose. Now, what's interesting about this is their national security does face some of those biotech challenges, meaning that they know that there are specific biological weapons and terrorism that can take place through research methods that may go awry, vis-a-vis -vis maybe the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But of course, our intelligence uh, here in the United States is working on that, according to President Biden's edict. So we don't need to go into that. Suffice it to say, man-made biological disasters will occur, and they can occur, and they have occurred through careless use. This is one of those national security challenges that really sets the basis for the development of military-grade bioweapons by the Chinese military. Now, the application of this field of endeavor, biotechnology, has become more and more extensive, meaning that they are integrating not only emerging bioweapons and equipment into the health of sustainable combat initiatives, but they're also looking at it to shape that future battlefield, meaning that strategic and tactical decision-making will focus
based on the success of these bioweapons. And of course, from that comes the consistent theme of combat power generation. If you can get inside a adversary's uh, observe, orient, decide, and act, or OODA loop, then you can essentially control the battlefield, produce a strong army using science and technology, and defeat them in space. Of course, the US military has had three decades plus of experience in Iraq and Afghanistan. In the Marine Corps, my service has never seen the second place. So what that means is the Chinese are really trying to use biological weapons in this new military revolutionary affair, uh, meaning that they are looking for an urgency and exigent development of bioweapons that will last them from a national defense perspective over the next three decades. So think about that when you think about future planning. And of course, there is a variety of relationships between both Chinese national defense and technical innovation. Of course, this is in Chinese, and I'm sure you can all read this, but I've done some translation for you. Suffice it to say that there is a subjective nature to this, which means that they know as a Chinese military and scientific world that there is a significant ecosystem historically where a lot of these intelligent substances arrive and arise and originate from that they can take advantage of. But they do know that this complex ecosystem of virology is incomplete. And what it means is that they can use big data and information processing and artificial intelligence to enhance the biological bioweapons development for the military. What this means then again from a combat generation perspective is that they can get the full measure of combat power projection using biotechnology. But that what that means then is that they need to have security around this program, meaning that it must remain somewhat secret so that other nations, adversaries that they may face on the battlefield cannot realize what is taking place. And of course, some of those major factors, as you can see from this narrative, are quite concise in development. Of course, I don't intend for you to translate this other than to say that there are a variety of different factors. Now, it should be no surprise because as we apply the diplomatic information intelligence military and economic mnemonic dime you can see that there are of course political and economic factors meaning they want to stay in power as the communist party there are social factors meaning that that colonization and domination is the manifestation of the chinese dream it is supplemented by the fact that bioweapons and biotechnology must enhance national security and then of course there are institutional and governments which means these factors are really tied to the national scientific national security focus of the People's Republic of China. Meaning while there are ethical issues, uh, nonetheless, those don't necessarily apply to the adversaries outside of China. Remember, they are the Middle Kingdom and they are dominant and we are subverted and subversive. Meaning they intend to colonize all of us and bioweapons as a military projection of power is one of those institutional and governance factors that they consider important. Now, Another series of major factors is to essentially look at what other countries, such as the United States, are doing. Look back a few years in terms of their development. It's all right here in plain Chinese for you to look at. However, I haven't taken the uh, largesse to translate this for you. And of course, there are competitive factors that the Chinese look at from a biological weapons perspective. Taking a look at the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA, in terms of what they have been doing, the Chinese military wants to dominate this field of endeavor, perhaps even surpassing those programs of the US military and what they consider to be DARPA's uh, baby child. Of course, there are diplomatic factors. They do realize that they cannot just lease or loose these bioweapons on other countries. However, that they do realize that these major and significant changes cannot keep pace with the diplomatic world. When diplomacy fails, of course, the projection of force and power is always necessary from a military perspective. As part of this, indeed, will be the fact that the Chinese military will be called to use bioweapons in order to colonize, attack, and make an enemy uh, secede to them. Now, of course, there are right to speak factors in terms of uh, what the US intelligence community has talked about in terms of gene editing and the genome editing project, for example, related to weapons of mass destruction. Uh, the fact that this is in the open uh, or in clear text for the Chinese military to pick up is interesting because this gives them a signal that indeed they must remain competitive and keep pace with this. And then, of course, the internal factors within China include those scientific and technological hurdle, hurdles uh, that could impede or delay the progress of biotechnical innovation. 
But nonetheless, it is important to understand that this model for the future in terms of bioweapons is a necessary condition for success of the Chinese military that will be the, uh, the arm of diplomatic failure in the force of power projection that the Chinese military will undertake perhaps in the future against the US military, other adversaries they may see on the air, land, and sea. So please don't relegate this to just a land discussion. And of course, this is really interesting because the evolution of this national tech biotechnology under the Chinese Defense Act really comes into the way that there are dual use weapons in the future being developed. And it's important to understand that when it comes to biological warfare, uh, there are major things that are recurring thing. Remember I mentioned that there are con arms controls in the International Biological Space, the OPCW that I talked about? The Chinese observe but don't belong to it. They also know that there are emerging technologies that will lead to new biological weapons that they can carry out. And of course, there is always the fatal temptation of inception, <laughs> meaning that uh, one must not be reborn in the image that is one because it may flash back or blow back on oneself. And then, of course, this leads to avoiding the nuclear trap, the failure that the Chinese observe of the Russian loss of the Cold War and the nuclear run up that the uh, the U.S. Uh, faced down Russia with. They believe that they, as the Chinese military and Chinese people, will have no competitors in the bioweapons and defense biotechnology realm. They will control the space and there's nothing that we can do about it, according to this. Now, of course, 2035, not too far off in the distant future, is going to be a tipping point for national defense biotechnology. Now, I certainly hope that President Biden's intelligence community is reading, watching, and paying attention to this. Of course, I've been ridiculed on YouTube, I've ri been ridiculed in space, but I will tell you, I'm not gonna predict this, I'm just reporting on what I see. And I've taken the uh, opportunity to let you know that when 2035 comes around, that development from by the Chinese uh, National Defense Biotechnology Initiatives will be the core product outside of information warfare for their protection. Of course, they're gonna look at organisms and controlling them, micro ecosystems, and essentially looking at ways to operate a biological uh, taxonomy of military and biological organisms from which they can pick and really direct at any adversary on the battlefield. Uh, they also understand that there are national treasure, treasures of military technological innovation, meaning they can prevent early strikes by other adversaries, including the United States, by essentially creating a very highly maneuverable, highly active, responsive, reactive reagent that can uh, identify, defeat, delay, degrade, destroy an adversary's capability to control them. I hope you're paying attention out there, US government and US intelligence community. And of course, there is the calculation of biological bioinformatics, meaning using biocomputing to essentially map these genes to the purpose which is intended for a military dual use capability. And what's interesting is, while there is information collection that may be needed for retention, they believe that by examining new different forms of life in this bioeconomic system, preventing those from being shared by some of the adversaries or countries that have dominated them, they can maintain that first mover military advantage and destroy an adversary in the battlefield. And then, of course, it gets into some of the more esoteric origin of life, origin of consciousness, uh, talking about cognitive memory, uh, dissonance, which gets a little bit uh, Jean-Paul Sartre for me. But nonetheless, it's something that they're talking about in terms of synthetic mind control. Uh, certainly, we've seen that in the US military, not meant to reflect anything that has or has not happened in the past, realistically. Of course, then uh, anticipated 15 years on beyond that in 2050, of course, it's right here for you in Chinese. Uh, certainly, you can read this. However, I've taken the, the liberty of taking a look at a new world order meaning a human machine environment is inevitable, meaning that man, society, and integration, and the possibility of eliminating biological warfare through that competitive biotechnology and national security matrix is going to be necessary, meaning that a calculation of what will happen in predicting that is a necessary intelligent attribute of this capability that they will develop. The military within China will also combine bionics of weapons and equipment, meaning that these automated systems will essentially locate, seek, and destroy adversaries that pose a problem to them in the form of third generation weapon system development. And then of course, 
There's environmental technology, making sure that while they don't necessarily care about destroying the earth, they are going to use it for their advantage. Now, when I say earth, I mean air, land, and sea. And they're going to make sure that if even if there is a incorrect interpretation of the United States uh, Convention, OPCW, or the prohibition of biological weapons, uh, it doesn't necessarily apply to the Chinese. While they are part of the National Security Council of the United Nations, uh, it's certainly something that uh, they believe that they can be a first mover and write the policy on that, as they have tried to do with the internet control with Russia. And then, of course, cognitive revolution and human birth, uh, meaning that there is a way to use nanotechnology in order to avoid uh, what had happened during the nuclear uh, trap and uh, dilemmas of the late uh, 60s, early 70s, into the 90s between Russia and China. And then last but not least, here's a little bit of a historical uh, trip down some of the military origins of this. Of course, they've been, they being the People's Liberation Army or the PLA or Jundwe, have been really focused on the advances of biotechnology and the way that it can change future conflicts. Uh, in 2010, Guo Jia Wei uh, worked on a significance of impact of biology on the future plans for China's military, meaning that over a decade ago, they were already looking at this in terms of future warfare planning. Five years later, Major General Hu Fu Chu uh, really started to talk about biomaterials in terms of controlling an adversary to make them think that they have been defeated on the battlefield in order to fix them in place and destroy them. Uh, this sounds pretty far out, but if you think about it, <clears throat> there are agents out there that can certainly render a, a adversary uh, incapable and incapacitated. And he was certainly talking about this from an ac academic perspective. And then we have a retired general, uh, Jean Chirbou, uh, <clears throat> who talked about seven new domains of warfare, including modern biotechnology development. What's interesting, meaning that he believed that the strong offensive capability could be included with specific genetic attacks that should be employed. Now think of the rest of Xinjiang province and there you have a living uh, battlefield environment that from a laboratory perspective that they could use. And then finally, uh, science of military strategy. I've talked about this in the information warfare talks, came out in 2017. You can actually get it on Amazon in English. Uh, really talks about that domain of a military bioweapons capability making note that this is indeed a force multiplier, uh, again, with an emphasis on specific genetic attacks. Uh, well, suffice it to say, they being the Chinese have been talking about this for some time. Uh, certainly, hopefully, our military and our intelligence uh, world here in the West is taking and keeping pace with this. Now, this gentleman, I mentioned him last one, it really was on the cutting edge for the biological frontier. And he talked about confrontation and new methods and when he meant new methods, he indeed meant genetic weapons in terms of how this can be done. And I talked about this earlier vis-a-vis -vis how these new genetic weapons will affect the Chinese use of and control of uh, future war. And really chemical weapons being the precursor to this, the bioatomic bomb with a huge lethality. Imagine a kinetic atomic bomb and what happened to the Chinese cities uh, during World War II. Well, the Chinese believe that this can be done from a bioweapons perspective, a bioatomic bomb, and meaning that uh, really one soldier uh, does not need to be placed in the, uh, in the uh, face of war to achieve military goals, that these genetic weapons will play that strategic role to preserve the tactical troops from being essentially pawns in a larger adversarial role. Uh, they do not want foreign militaries to face them on the battlefield and have that first mover advantage. The Chinese believe that indeed they will do that for you. And of course, they, as you saw last year, do train to the same standards that we do. Uh, it's interesting that this chem bio suit and mask look similar to the US, but I digress. This is not about intellectual property. Um, you should be aware of the uh, China National Gene Bank as part of their initiatives. I mean, it's right here in English. It's right out on the web. Uh, certainly, you can all read Chinese and go to the URL yourself, but it's interesting because they have been tasked with developing some of those genetic resources that will safeguard bioinformatics with a focus on national security. And it's really interesting because you've heard about seizing strategic commanding heights in the information or cyber warfare perspective. They believe that in the military domain of biotechnology that this company, the National Gene Bank, uh, we'll do the same for them. It's important to pay attention to organizations like this. And then, of course, when we think of uh, military use coming out of a gas mask, we've all done that. Uh, and biological weapons, as distasteful as it is, 
is something we should pay attention to. Last but not least, as I conclude my presentation, here are some of the conclusions. Uh, the dual Chinese military and civilian recollection of Japanese horrors of weapons of mass destruction during uh, the War of Aggression, World War II, really endures with them. Historically, they displaced uh, the Japanese. Economically, they'll use them, but from a military uh, colonization perspective, they hate them. Uh, they do study the horrors of this and prepare actively for the terrorist use of a bioweapon as a weapon of mass destruction. They do believe that dual use civilian military bioweapons programs is necessary and they are pursuing this. And they also believe that bioweapons accidents are inevitable in China via the Wuhan Institute of Virology and the Western world. As a result of that, they need to prepare for war. And then of course, similar to what the foreign military, militaries, US and others are doing to prepare, uh, no one wants a war, but they know that vigilance is necessary and really, when you look above, they don't want to be subject to any sort of other country coming in and using these bioweapons on the civilian or military population. Uh, number six, of course, bioweapons development and the procurement of that technology comes under the China's Thousand Talents Plan. If you want more about that, uh, certainly come and see some of my presentations on that in the uh, cyber warfare information dominance perspective. And low. They are using human intelligence and active intelligence collection, make no mistake about it. Number seven, of course, from a China manifest dream, uh, world domination culturally and economic is going to be their goal and weapons of biological mass destruction will be the military sword uh, that will take care of those that do not want to play. And then of course, they're actively preparing for weapons, bioweapons deployment in the shadow of the world's failure to convey co contain COVID. I apologize, it says COVID. It's not a new acronym, it should say COVID. That concludes my presentation, 32 minutes. If you have any comments or want to contact me, uh, please do so through the Biohacking Village. Thank you very much and have a great day. Three, two, one.